Good evening, President Martinez, Superintendent Aquino, board members, and honored guests. We will be sharing a progress monitoring report this evening for the board goals. A glossary with definitions for abbreviations and terms is provided for your convenience. Board goal one is focused on reading outcomes for all students. This evening, we will focus on the interim goals to measure performance towards the overall goal. Please note that the state of Texas has three passing standards for their assessments. Approach is grade level, which reflects a minimum passing standard. Meets grade level, which reflects on grade level performance or college ready performance and master's grade level, which reflects advanced performance. It is important to note that for both our reading and math goals, or goal one and two, SAISD has made the choice to hold ourselves to a higher standard than minimum passing and focus on meets or on grade level performance for all of our students. The Goal 1 Progress Monitoring reviews the percentage of all students at grades 3, 6, and 8 who are projected to perform on grade level or at the meets grade level on STAR on reading. MAP data historically runs on average about 10 percentage points below STAR performance. Since the five-year goal for reading performance is 50% or higher, the five-year goal for the interim MAP measures is 40% for all three grades. The data lines in blue reflect the 2022, 2023, and 2024 actual MAP beginning of year data. The targets in yellow for the 23 and 24 school years were developed to establish a minimum growth expected each year in order to reach the overall goal of 40 by 2027. The data does show that while there was some growth when comparing beginning of year to beginning of year from 2023 to 2024, it was not aggressive enough to keep us on track to meet the challenging five-year goal. Again, MAP data historically runs about 10 percentage points below STAR actual performance it meets. For example, in third grade reading, the 22-23 beginning of MAP data was projecting that 21% of grade three students would score at meets grade level at the end of the year. The actual percent of grade three students at meets on STAR was 31. In order to make growth, the annual target for 23-24 is 29%, which would result in a STAR grade three score of about 39%. However, the actual 23-24 BOI performance was just 24%. While this does reflect improvement, it is not sufficient to meet the annual target for any of the three grades measured. That is why we are not on track to meet this goal at this time. However, we do need to keep in mind that these targets are based on the original STAR data and MAP star correlations. We may need to revisit the targets and goals once more data is collected on the new star assessments. While SAISD is not on track for the projected interim year to date, the district continues to see gains. While we're taking many actions that are outlined in our Always Learning Plan to promote and support literacy, there are two major initiatives that I'd like to highlight for the purposes of this presentation. One, we're creating and launching daily lessons beginning in the spring. These daily lessons provide day-by-day -day support for explicit and systematic instruction. And it aligns this literacy instruction to the science of teaching reading. It also outlines a process for instructional delivery that is research-based that includes teaching reading and writing as reciprocal processes and also includes paired literacy instruction in dual language classrooms. In addition, the district is developing and launching a process for the adoption of a centralized curriculum with high quality instructional materials. This centralized uh, curriculum will pro provide continuity across the district. 
The curriculum would cover the state standards, aligned to evidence-based practices that supports all learners, including students with disabilities, emergent bilinguals, and students identified as gifted and talented. And it would also enable us uh, to provide frequent progress monitoring and provide implementation supports for teachers, including student and teacher facing lesson materials. We want to enter into this process thoughtfully, carefully, and strategically. The district currently has a curriculum that we have co-created with our teachers and with the San Antonio Alliance. We have a special group called the Alliance Curriculum Advisory Council that has been instrumental in uh, supporting this process. And so we want to, though, view our curriculum in terms of our current reality, which means that we um, need curriculum that supports new teachers, that will support substitutes who are often in our classrooms, um, supporting our students. And we believe that a thorough analysis of both the district curriculum and also high quality instructional materials that are supported by the Texas Education Agency is in order at this time. We want to enter this process thoughtfully because we do have preliminary data that suggests that the district curriculum is um, a strong curriculum and um, offers some benefits, but there are also some challenges in having a district curriculum. There will also be challenges by adopting a already prepared curriculum. For example, our current district curriculum supports culturally responsive teaching. It also ensures that the quality of instructional resources is the same for our monolingual students and bilingual students. That is harder to achieve adopting a packaged curriculum. However, creating district curriculum can be a slow process and it can be it can take a long time to get the needed instructional resources into the hands of the teachers. It also requires that our curriculum team spend time writing curriculum as opposed to supporting teachers in implementing the curriculum. One of the questions that we want to answer in the analysis of the curriculum is how might we use curriculum and curriculum supports to accelerate teaching and learning. We have been, uh, for the past three years, running a pilot on high quality instructional materials for reading. The state program Amplify is being implemented at 21 campuses. 37 of our campuses either use the district created curriculum or they use an alternate curriculum. This data shows amplified performance on the left for our most recent STAR assessment and on the right for non-amplify campuses for our recent STAR performance. You can see 53% um, of our students uh, uh, passed according to STAR for our Amplify campuses and 59% passed for our non-Amplify campuses. Of that percent, how many were considered on grade level? 29% Amplify, 30% non-Amplify. 8% met criteria to be considered masters uh, for Amplify and 9% met the criteria at our non-Amplify campuses. I'll pause on this slide so that you can review fourth grade star performance for our Amplify and non-Amplify campuses. This slide shows fifth grade star performance. This slide shows third grade star performance and isolates schools that have been identified as having high levels of fidelity 
to the implementation of the curriculum. So on the left are high fidelity campuses for Amplify and on the right are high fidelity campuses specific to the district created curriculum. I'll pause on this slide so that you can see fourth grade star performance for our high fidelity campuses. This slide shows fifth grade star performance for our high fidelity campuses. While the previous slides showed student performance, we also wanted to pair, compare growth for Amplify versus non-Amplify campuses. This slide shows fourth and fifth grade star literacy performance. As we shared with the board during our star an data analysis, we do uh, continue to focus on four high yield literacy strategies that we believe will help us see greater results this year, which include improving reading skills um, through a focus on close reading, um, helping students transfer their learning and to be able to think as writers and readers, and then also including more strategies for constructed response and extended constructed response, which represents new item types um, on our STAR assessment. And then we also are including teacher modeling for higher order thinking through strategies such as think alouds, write alouds, and guided student discussions. Board goal two is focused on improving math outcomes for all black students. The following slides focus on interim goals 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3 to measure performance toward the overall goal. The goal two progress monitoring reviews the percentage of all black students at grades three, six, and eight who are projected to perform on grade level or at meets grade level on STAR. Since the five-year goal for STAR is 50%, the five-year goal for these interim map measures is 40%. On this slide, the data in blue reflects the 2022, 2023, and 2024 actual MAP beginning of year data for all Black students in math. The targets in yellow for both the 23 and 24 school year were developed to establish a minimum growth expected each year to get to the overall goal of 40% by 2027. For third grade math, the 2022-2023 beginning of year map data projected that 9% of grade three students who were black would score at meets grade level. The actual percent of black grade three students that were at meets on STAR in 2023 was 19. To make growth, the annual target for 23-24 is 19% which would result in a STAR grade three score of about 29%. However, the actual 23-24 BOY performance was only 12. While this does reflect improvement, it is not sufficient to meet the annual target for any of the three grades measured. That is why we are also not on track to meet this goal at this time. As with literacy, SAISD is not on track for projected uh, interim year to date. However, the district continues to see gains. We have three high leverage initiatives uh, outlined in our always learning plan for mathematics. One, as we discussed earlier, is the adoption of a centralized curriculum with high quality instructional materials. The other is to engage our Mathematics Advisory Council. We have a very strong advisory council that we are um, using to help identify barriers to mathematics achievement for black students and to make recommendation to mitigate these identified barriers. This group focuses primarily on curriculum, instruction, and assessment. 
We also have developed a Black Educator Advisory Council to investigate and to drive policy that improves the experience and breaks down the barriers to learning for specifically for Black students. Our uh, Black Educator Advisory Council had a design incubation session in June. They have spent this time working on their priorities and goals for this group and have a focus on the analysis of data and the evaluation of the systems and structures that we could change to improve teaching and learning, specifically in mathematics for black students. As we shared previously during our STAR data presentation, we continue to implement culturally responsive teaching strategies and continue to monitor the district curriculum through strategies such as campus learning walks, uh, where we utilize a common protocol to collect and respond to evidence of quality instruction. This concludes our presentation. Thank you very much for your time and attention.